Good friends, good afternoon. We are going to speak about something very special that comes in the book of Acts, chapter 12 and verse 4. And we are going to, to share its contents and we are going to study several uh, ways in which this particular verse has been translated uh, to modern languages, to, to languages that are in in use in the present times. Uh, so we are requesting the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please, Holy Spirit, come and inspire me with uh, your fire, with your blessing, so that I can share the, uh, this subject in the, the most uh, productive and favorable way so that I am not going to promote any confusion or any skewed way of thinking in the people who are going to hear this small exercise. Holy Spirit, thank you for your gifts and thank you for the opportunity to share this perspective and this study and I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ and bless everyone who is about to hear this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are going to start by reviewing what says here in this verse. First of all, let me give a small introduction to where and when this problem became an interest for me. And I was watching at uh, this preacher, this uh, uh, minister of God, who ministers the Word of God. So he says, uh, his name is uh, Stephen Dollins, and he spoke about the situation with the celebration of Easter, Easter, which I have never celebrated myself, but it is celebrated in certain places of the world. So let us hear what uh, the pastor Stephen Dollins has to say. And what we want to examine in this is whether or not Easter is really a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, can we say as a, as a group of believers here tonight that if it's a celebration of Jesus, we want to have everything to do with it? Amen? But if it's not then we want to look at what it really is about and what it really conceals. And we look at Easter, we look at a time when the church celebrates Jesus coming out of the tomb, but that name has a hidden meaning to it. And you'll see this tonight. Easter time is a time just like Christmas. When we just looked at Christmas, it's a time of getting gifts. And when they, they sent a, a lady out, and I can't remember her name right offhand, but they sent a lady out to do a poll about two years ago. And she went to the school system and she started uh, asking school age children all the way up to fourth grade, from first grade to fourth grade, what does Easter mean to you? And that was the question that they asked. They just wanted to know, what does Easter mean to you? And did you know that not one of them said anything about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? In fact, the, the most prevalent uh, uh, answer to that was, it's a time for a visit from the Easter Bunny. It's a time to go Easter egg hunting. And you have to ask yourself, what do Easter eggs, chocolate rabbits, and a bunny have to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ? And do you know that it's exactly the same way that parents use to control their children that we talked about earlier? When they talk about Santa Claus and they say, if you're not a good boy or not a good girl, Santa Claus won't come see you. Uh, In certain parts of the Northern Hemisphere, we have the first season of the year or the last season of the year, which is winter. And after winter, we have a season that we call the spring. Then following the spring, we have a season that is called summer. 
And after summer, we have a season called autumn. So winter is a time of uh, solstice. That means that the sun reaches one of its extreme positions along the horizon. That, that's why it is called solstice. That means that the soul is not, does not move beyond that point along the horizon. And the spring is uh, the season of when the winter is already gone and the land becomes refreshed by the, the winter snow, which is melting by the melting of the winter snow. So uh, the fields blossom. This is the time of spring, while summer in northern hemisphere is a time of heavy rains, a time of uh, uh, which uh, when the, per the people, the agricultural societies expect that uh, the crops are going to grow. While in autumn, there is the season for harvesting, for harvesting. The celebration of Easter is not common in uh, many Christian countries, but it is very interesting to understand which uh, are the components, are the pieces that make this celebration and how it is associated with the Christian celebration of this resurrection of Jesus Christ. We can see that uh, the symbols of Easter, which are the eggs and the bunnies, are associated with the cross of Jesus Christ during this special season of the year. So, where does Easter come from? The word Easter is associated at least phonetically associated with the goddess Ishtar. The goddess Ishtar belongs to ancient Mesopotamic traditions and it is found in plenty, plenty of the relics that are found at those places which are now archaeological remnants. But since this is a subject of much debate in modern times, let us see first what this um, person uh, has to say in his blog. This, he says Easter is not named after Ishtar and other truths I have to tell you. Okay, so he is uh, quoting again from the almost the same images that we found in the previous uh, clip and uh, he is speaking of against the religious opinions both in favor or in uh, case contrary to the celebration of Easter. So he starts making some remarks. He says this is Ishtar. I mean, this goddess is Ishtar. He says the relief picture is known as the Bernie relief or the queen of the night relief. And some consider that this deity is Lilithu or, or Eresh Kigad. And it is found in the British Museum in London. Easter is originally the celebration of Ishtar, the Syrian and Babylonian goddess of fertility and sex. So he says, anyway, the point I am trying to make here is that, yes, Ishtar was associated with fertility and sex. However, her symbols were the lion, the gate, and the eight-pointed star. I can't find any evidence of eggs or rabbits symbolically belonging to her. Most scholars believe that Easter gets its name from Eostre or Ostara, a Germanic pagan goddess that is 
very sound to hear. Let us see who is Oshtara. The owners of this blog say that Eostre or Easter is an Anglo-Saxon goddess with, who is not documented from pagan sources at all and it turns up to be from Christian source in the writings of the churchman, English churchman Bede. There is a very interesting association between certain symbols concerning the worship of fertility goddesses, especially when goddesses are associated with the moon and the spring. In this quote, it says that the Easter Bunny is said to have been the bird which at one time drew the chariot of the goddess of spring and was turned into a hare. Every year, however, at the coming of spring, the hare remembers and in commemoration of its original bird nature lays eggs as an offering to spring and youth it symbolizes. Here we can see, almost in chronological order, what we speak about this ancient tradition of representing and associating a goddess, a female god, a female deity, with symbols associated with nature cycles and with birds which lay eggs and which prey and are detached from the from the earth due to their wings and the rabbits who multiply in great quantities the moon as i said and the symbol of spring as a continuation of life now let's go to the utilization of the word easter in the Christian tradition. So the word Easter must have come from some source. In this Bible study tools, which is a, a website, we can read that the, the story of Easter is represented by the Last Supper, the betrayal of Judas, the crucifixion of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus. And in one particular source that we are trying to quote from is under the title Which Easter by Dr. Ken Mato. And he mentions that in the book of Acts 12 and verse 4, according to the King James Version, and when he had apprehended him, speaking of Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Easter celebration is the very celebration of Passover, but the name Easter comes from the word probably of ancient Germanic origin, Ostara. One of the accusations which is uh, leveled at the King James Bible is the translation of the word Pascha as Easter. The word Pascha is not a Greek word, but is from the Aramaic Pascha. The Herod in view here, it was Herod Agri Agrippa, who was a grandson of Herod the Great, and who was nephew to Herod Antipas, who beheaded John the Baptist. They were Idumean, which was Edomite, which this means that Herod Agrippa was not a Jew, but an Edomite. The Edomites were descendants of Esau. What we have just read is a quote by Dr. Matos, but here we have the New International Version of the Bible speaking about the same event, but in a particular language. Peter Miraculous escaped from prison, chapter 12, book of Acts. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. 
When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to, to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. That means a 16 soldiers. Herod intended to bring him out of public trial out for public trial after the pass over. And this is the season mentioned here that he they were seized during this particular season. Now let us see what those the King James version has to say. There is a new King James version and probably we have uh, another, uh, let us see, the Orthodox Jewish Bible, they, they could not have it, New Matthew Bible Living Translation, New King James Version. So in the uh, New King James Version says the, the same thing. Now about that time, Herod the King, the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with his sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now, it was during the days of unleavened bread. So, now, the, the words used here are days of unleavened bread. So, when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him for, to four squads of soldiers to keep him intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Now we have the same text, but this time with King James Version, not the new King James Version. And we are going to see 12. Now about that, that time, Herod the king stretches forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded farther, farther to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, associated with Passover, of course. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So we can see that effectively Easter is mentioned in the King James Version. Now let us see how it is read in another even more modern version of the Bible. So please allow me to tell you that the problem that I'm bringing here is how the accuracy of the biblical language is important in order to understand and apply the concepts of the Bible to the solution or explanation of particular events in Christian life. This is a Bible, this is a translation of the Bible into Kachikel Mayan language. And it says, I am going to read the Kachikel language, but I am going to, to, to underline where the same words are quoted, are, are translated, and the way they are translated into this language. In verse 3, it says, Romari, because Agrippa said, Chiri, Shuben, Chire, Rijacobo, Shakan, Shka, Chikiwech, Rijudio, Riman, Kinibanta, Jesucristo, Rija, Shutek, a chuka ruchapik ruchapik ri pedro romari that is why agrippa uh, when he agrippa saw uh, that what he he did on jacob was um, pleasing to the jewish community uh, then he uh, seek to 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 seize uh, pedro the Pedro the Apostle. Re ishbana tech chupam rini makih, tok nitih rikash language, rimanek chamilech or riking. So it says here that uh, during the, that celebration, nimakih means literally, nima means great, and ich means day at that particular 
great day that means that celebration Imaki means celebration he managed to have uh, to have Peter captured Tok Chapon Chic a P. Ripedro, Rirey, Shutek el K. Pa cárcel y Roma Rija, Ruchobonchik, Chi, A. Nico, Nakan, Rinimakij, Ri, Karik, A. L. Sag, P. Richinuk, Et, Sig, Pa Ruich, Kiwech, Riwinakir. So uh, the word here is Nima, Ig. No mention that Passover, no mention Easter, no mention that it was the time of the unleavened. Bread. The only mention here of the of the bread is Rikash Lang Wei Shimanek Chamilek or Shikin. This is the season of the unleavened bread. Bread that was cooked without yeast. So this is how this situation transforms from one version of the Bible to other. Now we are able to see what brother Stephen Dolins have to say on this situation. When the King James Bible translates this, this time of the, of the year, the celebration of the year for Easter is the same situation that is occurring when these people are translating the Bible into Maya language. Because these translations of the Bible are made in the cultural sense. Easter was better known for the, the old uh, British people than Passover. It is interesting how we can review different sources in different languages at the same time in the same place and we can see so we cannot read greek but greek is very easy to to pronounce for uh, for for some people that means honkai piasas eteto eis filaken parados tersarsin tradiois stratioton filasein auton boulomenos metato pascha this is this is the word that is taking us to this uh, research, Pascha, and it is translated into Pas. Stephen Dolins, uh, hear what he has to say about this situation. You know, the child could be in a store acting up. And one of the things that a dad or mom would look down and say, do you want Santa to miss you this year? And I mean, they straighten up just right away. And the same thing happens with the Easter Bunny. If they don't think they're going to get a visit from the Easter Bunny, they're, they're heartbroken. But this is another celebration that's a child celebration because the children look forward more to it more than adults do. And so Easter eggs and bunnies, chocolate bunnies, we look at those things and, and I mean, right offhand, you don't see Jesus in an egg. I'm sure you probably could if you looked hard enough. You don't see him in a chocolate bunny. So we wonder why those things have anything to do with Easter. Well, again, remember that in order to get a belief system integrated into your system, into your belief system, that all gods are one God, you have to impersonate God and you have to replace him. And that's exactly what the Easter bunny and eggs have done. Where did Easter get its name? Those are some of the things we have to look at is where did Easter get its name? Where did the concept of the Easter bunny and the Easter egg actually originate? And do these things have any relation to the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Because if we can say no to any of these things, then we can rule this celebration out as being Christian or as being something that needs to be celebrated in the church. In scripture, the word Easter is found in the book of Acts 12, 4. Now look what it says. Now about that time, Herod the king, and look what he said, that time, talking about a special particular time. That about that time, Herod the king, and who was Herod? Herod was the king who wanted to destroy Jesus and sent men out to find infants and just starting to destroy infants, hoping that one of the infants that were destroyed, Jewish infants that were destroyed, would be the Messiah, the Christ child. 
Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. That means cause them a whole lot of hurt. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Now notice that he saw it pleased the Jews. So he saw that it pleased the Jews that there was a killing. That James, the brother of John, was killed with the sword. And he proceeded to take Peter also. On and about that time. Now what time is he talking about? Well, look here. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. Talking about Peter now. And delivered him to four quarter minions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, let me ask you a question. Put on your thinking caps for just a second. If Easter has to do with the resurrection, why is Herod the king celebrating it? Why does he put it as being any kind of importance? Remember, he wanted Christ destroyed before he had a chance to grow to adulthood. So if Easter has to do with the resurrection, why would Herod be celebrating Easter? Well, in order to conclude with this presentation, I can tell you that my final assumptions on this subject for the time being are the following. First, it is questionable whatever reason made to support the incorporation of religious traditions to Christian way of life. It appears clear that traditions are social processes not indispensable for the practice of Christian way of life. You can live without traditions and still be a Christian, and a very good one. Second, Jesus himself did not support traditions as a plausible way to reach the kingdom of God. Jesus did not recommend to follow traditions in order to become a, a candidate for the kingdom of God. In his own words. Number three, Bible translations seem to follow the route of explaining biblical facts in such a way that it will comply with culture and traditions of the population that will read the translation. Number four, parents usually resort to use traditions to make an easy way to control children. In this process, families have become the, base, the basic social scenario in which religious thoughts replace other religious thoughts and beliefs. Number four, in the process of recent history, since the dawn of Christianity, some values, views, facts, and notions have been distorted, sometimes in such a way that modern manifestations of those values, views, facts, and notions have little resemblance with the original depiction of the fact. In general words, I am going to recommend you to be very careful with whatever tradition you believe is going to make you free from whatever your problems might be. Thank you and be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen.